kids welcome to taxi tutorials uh, today we are going to learn about callback functions in JavaScript uh, which are also called higher order functions now uh, if you have used JavaScript you probably have already used callback functions if you haven't then you haven't done real JavaScript programming uh, so they are very useful and let's understand what they are in JavaScript functions are actually first-class objects just like uh, you can pass objects into functions as argument you can pass other functions into functions um, as arguments and execute at some point so let's look at an example uh, here in this example I have a function X uh, and another function Y now function Y uh, has an argument called callback I am uh, executing this uh, uh, function callback and then uh, in function y when I execute it I can pass x uh, which is a function as an argument as a callback and it would execute inside y now if you notice something uh, function x we are passing into y uh, as a function body we're not executing and passing the you know the results we're just passing the function body itself uh, into uh, into another function and uh, we can execute it at some point uh, so if I run this um, the first uh, line gets executed console log do something and then the uh, function X gets executed which basically console logs you know I am called from inside a function so this is a very simple way of doing it now you can you could be doing something before or after this callback function it would work fine now this is a very simple example of a callback function but just like anything when you're learning something you need to understand why are you learning this right why why do we need a callback functions uh, so I'm going to give another simple example of uh, some doing something without callback function and then improving using callback function so you can see the real use of callback functions uh, and in the end I'm gonna give you a real practical example that you can understand that you can apply in your code okay so I'm going to build a, a simple function called calc uh, and what it's gonna do it's gonna it's gonna take two numbers as arguments first two are numbers uh, and the third argument would be calculation type um, and then inside the function it would based on the calculation type it would decide what to do with two numbers so for example if the argument third argument is add it would add these two numbers and return uh, if it's uh, multiply then it would multiply these two numbers and return the result um, so inside the function I have to make the decision so I would say if uh, calc type equal to add then I would return a basically number one plus number two uh, simple right else if the cal type is let's say multiply then it would simply return the multiplication of the uh, these two numbers so it would basically do this okay it's fine now if I execute this I can say calc two three and add and I can console log uh, when I run this oops I have some error here oh I have else if uh, okay if I run it again I would get five uh, now this works fine uh, but let's say if this 
function calc is a part of some library, um, just like jQuery library. And a uh, user is supposed to use this library and pass the number and calculation type and should get the result. Now, in order for all the possible calculation type, this library has to implement all of it, right? You could be passing add, multiply, subtract, or it could be some random operation that uh, the library uh, people have not thought about. So what is the best way? The best way to do it is make this function as abstract as possible. Um, in order to do that, we can bring the, the functionality add and multiply outside. We don't need this inside the, uh, this function. So what we can do is we can take the whole thing and we can actually uh, build this function outside. So we can say add is a function which takes two arguments, a and b, and it simply returns a plus b. Fine. And I can have another function called multiply. And it simply multiplies these two numbers and returns it. Now here in the calc function, uh, all I have to do, instead of calc type, I can just simply say callback. That's a function. And inside I can just execute this function, just like we looked at a previous example, and pass number one and number Two. Now here, instead of passing the string add, we're going to pass this function itself. Now let's look at it if it works. If I clear this and play this, oh, I have to actually return this. And it returns me five. So now, instead of add, I can say multiply and it would multiply this to a number and give me six. Uh, I can even create my function. You can see the use for this um, callback function because as a user, I can create any function and pass into this library and it would give me this result. Um, I can say, um, let do what ever. Uh, let's say it's a function and what it does it, it simply returns it consoles it back numbers here are your, your two numbers back and it basically gives the numbers back okay so if I clear this and run this I have to really pass this Oh, I made a mistake. Function. And actually, I also need to pass this here, do whatever. It says, uh, here are your two numbers back, two and three. So this is a really power of callback functions. Now let's look at a few interesting patterns on this. Um, right now, I have a function add and multiply and do whatever, which I'm passing, you know, as a callback function. But actually, I can write function directly as an argument. I don't really have to define the function outside. Uh, so I can simply do this function um, a, b. Now here, I can do subtraction. I can say. return a minus b and it would work uh, just fine 
if I run this, it would give me minus one. Uh, two minus three is minus one. Now this function, because I have I don't have a name for it, it's called anonymous function. Uh, when you have to use something only once, uh, you don't want to define it and pass it. You can just directly write into function uh, argument. Um, so they are very useful uh, when you have to do something only once. Now if I uh, tidy this up, it looks more presentative. This is how you really need to write, uh, not in like one line. This is a better way of writing it. Uh, second thing you want to do is, uh, when I pass the callback function and execute it, I want to make sure that the user um, who's using it, uh, it's really passing a function, not anything else. So I need to, I need to do a check here. Uh, before I actually execute the callback function. So what I need to do is, I would like to have an if statement, if the callback function, if type of callback equal to function, then only I want to execute this. Just in case if somebody passed some garbage, uh, which is not a function, then it should basically, this should actually take care of it. Um, and you might want to put something in else, uh, maybe some error, depends on your situation, uh, what you want to do. But this actually won't break. Um, if somebody passed something else but the function. Uh, now let's look at a practical example. So here uh, I have an array which has some numbers and string as properties. Um, you know, five apples, seven cabbage, and one ban, uh, banana. Um, so what I want to do, I want to sort it um, by string. So the apple would um, come first. A banana would come second and the cabbage would come third. Um, <clears throat> so the best way to do it is using a callback function. Now JavaScript provides a sort function, uh, but it it's up to us how we want to sort it. So you can pass a callback function inside uh, the sort function. Uh, that, that will make the decision how the sort is going to happen. So uh, if you look at this, uh, it would uh, the the callback function uh, has two values, val one and val two, and uh, we can say um, val one dot string, uh, which would be this. Uh, if you have two values, uh, and whichever is bigger, so if it's if 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 the string A is big we can sort, this would basically sort in, in a reverse order. So the cabbage would come first, a banana would come uh, second, and an apple would um, uh, come last. So if I sort, uh, if I basically run this, if I run this, uh, I would get three objects here. And I can expand it here. And as you can see, it has cabbage, uh, banana, and apple. Now, I can simply say uh, switch the sign from greater than to less than um, and run this and it would give me completely reverse order. Now how, how easy this is sorting. Um, instead of uh, string I can actually sort by number. Uh, all I have to just say dot num here. As you can see, in this callback function, we are deciding how we want to sort, and it's a tiny function, but the sorting mechanism happening inside the sort function that is uh, that we don't know exactly how it's happening, but all we can control is the order, you know, uh, and it works fine. So now if I run this, uh, it should basically uh, give me one, five, and seven because now I'm sorting by numbers. So it gives me one, five comes, uh, and then the seven comes last. And if I uh, switch the sign again, it would give me seven, five, one. 
So I'm controlling using this callback function how the sorting is going to work. So this is an interesting example of how the callback functions are useful. Well, uh, so that's it, folks. I uh, hope you learned something. And if you did, um, please provide uh, some comment and like the video and uh, subscribe it for the future cool videos. Thank you.